So today I'm gonna to be reviewing a tablet that's been out now for about a year, and that is the Lenovo Tab P12. And what really drew me to wanna to review this tablet today is actually all of the great sales that I'm seeing on it. And we're seeing these sales on a screen size, a tablet that has a 12.7 inch screen. It is absolutely bonkers. So if you want a large screen at a very good price, I really think this tablet is the way to go, but there are still some compromises out there. So is it worth buying for you? and is it the right tablet for your situation? Well, we're gonna find out in this full review. So with all that being said, let's get right into it. So whenever you look on the tablet landscape, if you're looking for a good deal on a larger screen tablet, there aren't a lot of good deals out there. That is where the Lenovo Tab P12 comes in because it is a larger device at 12.7 inches. But if you look right now at the sale prices, they are very, very shocking. This device does retail for $350. And if you do want 256 gigs of storage, you'd pay around 380. But that does come with the stylus, which is really nice, at least in the US. But if you're wanting something with a keyboard case, and if you're wanting some really awesome sales, there is some good news out there. Currently on Lenovo's website, and I do get sales do change, but you can get this tablet with a keyboard case and with a stylus for under $300. Of course, that is an awesome deal for a larger screen size, because if you look at the Tab S9 FE Plus, you're gonna pay a lot more money, especially not only for the tablet, but if you do want a keyboard case, that is going to run you a little bit of extra money. So to see that type of sale is a big deal, and if you don't even care about the keyboard case, you could get the tablet by itself for around $270. That is a very good deal, but there are some compromises with that deal, but again, I still think this tablet is going to be a very good bargain for some of you. So let's start off by talking about the design of this tablet. If you do look at it, it is a really nice aluminum build to the tablet. You're gonna see this little part on the back of the tablet. It actually does magnetize this pin. Now this pin does come with it in the US, which I was pretty surprised by, but on Lenovo's website, whether it's through them or whether it's through Best Buy, the stylus is included. Now that may change in the future, so please pay attention to the listing, but the pin does magnetize here to the back. However, the pin that it comes with actually uses is USB-C charging. And whenever I got this tablet, the pin was not working. I actually had to charge up the stylus for a little bit, and then I had to hold this button a few seconds to actually get it to pair. If you go into the stylus settings inside the tablet, it will actually lead you as far as what you need to do. But you can still put the stylus here if you want it to stay there for, well, just for looks, I guess, or to keep your stylus handy. So that is really cool. Now on the sides of the tablet, you're gonna see two speakers and you're going to see a nice fingerprint sensor on the left-hand side. There are two more speakers on the right-hand side with a USB-C port. And I should also mention there's an SD card slot on the left-hand side as well. And that is really, really awesome, of course. Now, beyond that, there's not anything too impressive. You are going to see the pins at the bottom for the keyboard case. If you do wanna buy the keyboard case separately, it will cost you about $100, but you can find it on sale sometimes for around $80 if you are looking around. Again, I'm gonna have all the links in the description so that you can find what you need. Now, moving on to the front of the device, there are some bezels, but the bezels are not that bad. So I don't mind that there are some bezels. It does give me something to hold on to, but I do still think they are small enough to not be a big distraction. Now, one of the things that really impressed me whenever I was looking at the design of this tablet was those speakers, because those speakers are very, very loud. I was shocked at how good they were, especially for the price. So if you do want loud sounding speakers that sound very full, I do think the sound quality is fairly good. It's not quite as good, obviously, as a flagship tablet like the S9 Ultra, but still, they were very, very loud and very full sound and that actually impressed me quite a bit. This tablet is really meant for those people who want really good entertainment, and if you want really good battery life, or if you wanna get productive sometimes, that's what this tablet is going to provide, because if you look at the front, you are getting a 12.7 inch screen. 
It does have a 2944 by 1840 resolution. So the resolution is a lot better than a lot of other competitors out there. I would say the screen here is going to be better than the OnePlus pad. It's going to be better than a lot of other devices like the Galaxy Tab S9 FE or the S9 FE Plus because of this really good resolution. One of the more unfortunate things though is the refresh rate. So the screen looks awesome as far as entertainment and as far as things you're watching, but you're not gonna get AMOLED here, you are going to have to deal with an IPS LCD display. And this does only have a 60 hertz refresh rate. Now I completely understand if some of you tech nerds really, really care about that right here. I am one of those people that really likes a high refresh rate screen because as you're scrolling around on your phone, the screen refreshing a little bit faster, it does make everything feel a little smoother. But 60 hertz will be just fine for a lot of people out there. Again, if you're someone that just wants to watch a lot of entertainment, entertainment, if you want your tablet to last a long time, and if you occasionally want to do some productivity work, this tablet will be tremendous for you. But it's not going to feel quite as smooth as some newer tablets that do have a 90 or a 120 hertz refresh rate, because again, that does make scrolling feel just a little bit smoother. And also, I know some people are going to care that this does not have an AMOLED display. It does not have OLED, but it still looks very, very good, and I just want to remind you that most Android tablets around this price point, even around four or five hundred dollars. Most of those tablets do not have an OLED display. So I don't mind it here because they are still giving us a better display and they are giving us a very, very nice resolution. And everything does look very, very good whenever I am watching entertainment or whenever I'm using the tablet for whatever I'm doing. Now, as far as performance, that is one place that you're gonna take a little bit of a hit. This does have a MediaTek Dimensity 7050 processor, and it does have eight gigabytes of RAM, at least what I'm seeing out there in the US. All of the models that I'm seeing listed at Best Buy and Lenovo, they are all showing eight gigabytes of RAM, but I did hear some models might have four gigabytes, so pay very close attention to any listing that you are looking at. So the performance, it is good. It's actually better than the Galaxy Tab A9 Plus. It's better than the Lenovo Tab M11, but it will be a little bit slower than some higher end tablets like the Galaxy Tab S9 FE. So if you are someone that really wants a high performing device, this is not going to be it. Now it's not gonna be a slouch whenever you are going around. I can have a lot of different tabs open. I can go from app to app. And as long as I have just a little more patience, it doesn't take a lot of waiting, it's going to feel very nice and it's going to feel pretty fluid. And I'm going to be able to go to get to whatever I need to do. So it does a good job overall. So if you are wanting to do some productivity work or watch some entertainment or scroll around the news, I still think this will be more than sufficient for you. Even if you want to type a nice large paper, having a larger tablet like this with a larger screen, it will help you to be more productive. Remember a lot of smaller devices like the Tab S9 FE or other devices that are 11 or even 10 inches, those tablets are going to be a little harder to get productive work done on because if you do decide to buy a keyboard case, those keyboard cases will be a little bit more crammed of course because they're trying to fit a smaller screen size. So to get a larger screen here means that the keyboard cover will also be a little bit larger, the keys will be a little more spacious, and it will be a little bit better for productivity work. And obviously, if you're using the screen for that, you're gonna be able to fit a little more things on your screen, and that is going to be very, very handy. So again, I can say it once and I can say it twice or again and again. This is very good for those people who want that larger screen size. And we have to remember that you often pay in tablet world for screen size. So a lot of people would say, why would I get this when I could get the Galaxy Tab S9 FE for a similar price? Well, screen size is the answer because the S9 FE Plus is almost identical to the S9 FE, but you're paying more for the screen size and just a little bit more RAM on that model, but it's almost identical in every way. But if you want a larger screen that's over 12 inches, you're naturally going to pay for that. And it's the same thing if you look at the Tab S9 and the Tab S9 Plus, it's the same thing with a lot of iPad models out there. So if you want this larger display and you wanna get some good work done, and you do want a very nice entertainment device, well, it's really good that you could get that
pad with a keyboard cover and with a stylus for right around $300. That's going to be an excellent deal if you look at some of those sales. And if you don't want that keyboard cover again, you can find this for a reasonable price around $270. Now, if you look at things like battery life, the battery life is tremendous on this tablet. Because the screen size is a little larger, I know it might drain a little more battery, but it also has a much larger battery than some other competitors. We're talking like over 3,000 extra milliamps than something like the Google Pixel tablet. It technically charges at 30 watts, but I think that will be good enough for a lot of you. And that is a very large battery size, and that will get you good battery life. You're talking about nine or 10 hours of screen on time, depending on who you are and what you're doing. And I understand it may fluctuate as far as that screen on time. It's really hard. I could run a test at 200 nits and try to really run an unrealistic scenario just watching a video. I don't think that's really practical for everyday use, but my screen time was around nine to 10 hours whenever I was using it. But again, gaming or other things, they will take down the battery a little more. So the one other thing I have to talk about is the stylus. And the stylus is something that might not come with every model throughout the world, but in the US right now and on Lenovo's website, check and make sure that it does come with it in the little description with the specs and everything, but it should come with the stylus depending on what listing you're looking at. And I would say the stylus experience overall is very, very good. Whenever I'm in an app like Microsoft's OneNote app, it does actually work well to recognize the stylus. So that is really, really nice. It actually seems to work very well. I'm not a big artist, but I do enjoy the stylus experience. It's not perfect. It is a 60 Hertz display, but despite that, I really do enjoy it. So overall, when I look at this tablet, it is very, very promising and very, very good. It is a step below the competition if you are looking at performance. I do understand that. And if you see it at its full retail price, it might not be worth it, but there's a lot to like here. Even with software updates, this actually has an Android 14 now. And even with security patches, I'm seeing this device will get security patches through 2027. And there is one more big operating system update it will get. It. So you might want more software updates than that, and I do understand there are some compromises. You might not like the fact that it doesn't have an AMOLED display, but I would challenge you to find an AMOLED display at this price point. Outside of the Lenovo Tab P11 Pro Gen 2 having an OLED display, there aren't a lot of OLED displays on tablets around this price, and those devices also have some other compromises. So the fingerprint sensor, yeah, it's just a little bit slower. Sure, I do get that. And yeah, it doesn't have a 90 or 120 hertz refresh rate. If those are deal breakers for you, I do get it. You're gonna have to spend some more money and get something else. But if you want a larger tablet, and if you want it for a lot of entertainment, and if you want it for a more reasonable price, this is going to be a great option for you. So I would highly recommend it, and I would recommend if you find this out there for $299 or around that price, if you see it coming with the keyboard cover, that is a great deal because I'm seeing it without the keyboard cover for around 270. So getting the keyboard cover for like 30 extra bucks, the pen or the stylus coming with it, and getting a larger screen size at a reasonable price, it is great if you are willing to deal with slightly slower performance Again, better than a lot of tablets around one or $200, but it is a little bit worse than the S9 FE Plus. So a great tablet and a great deal, but only for the right people who are willing to deal with these compromises. Hopefully this video has helped you out. Please give me a like and give me a sub on this channel. That really does mean a ton to me. And another thing you could do if you get a little bit of time is check out those affiliate links because that is a great way to support my channel. Always, it means so much to me if you use those to purchase anything because that does help to support me and my family and my channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And one other thing I'll say, if you get a little bit of time, why not check out some other videos, right? Because there's a lot of other things I cover with Android devices. So have a great day. And one other thing I hope is that you really, really enjoy your week.